Uh, did you watch SmackDown? Yes, I did. Okay, so they open up with uh, Tiffany Strat. Um, she got a full year to contra- to cash in the Money in the Bank. Strat said Trish Stratus may have been the hometown host of Money in the Bank, but she was a real star of the show. Uh, a Tiffy time champ broke out, and she said champions Bailey, Liv Morgan, and Roxanne Perez better have their heads on swivels. Then Bailey comes out, congratulated her winning the Money in the Bank match, and Bailey entered the ring while Stratton questioned what she was doing and reminded her of this Tiffy time. They said she came in to offer advice because she won in 2019 and assumed that Stratton didn't know what, what WWE was in 2019. She said that was, Stratton said that was a million years ago. And Bailey told Stratton if she plans to cash in on her, she'll be the first female winner to cash in unsuccessfully. Then Nia Jax made her entrance. That's why Bailey was making empty threats. And Jax said she will take the championship from Bailey at SummerSlam. And Jax entered the ring and stood next to Stratton. But Bailey said it's not NXT hugger Bailey or the 2017 Bailey that put Jax on the shelf for months. She said she's the Grand Slam and Rumble winner. I mentioned the possibility of Jax beating her and then question, question what Stratton would do. Jax said Stratton is a personal Bob Barbie doll. And Jax said she would victimize Bailey at SummerSlam. And then Bailey wanted to punch Jax. But Stratton hooked her arm and hit Stratton. And then Jax knocked Bailey down. And then Minchin showed. And the funny thing is the announcers never made it sound like this in this this scenario could turn into a cash-in because it's a two-on-one thing. Like you know, They never brought that up. And Bailey, I, I don't I don't know. This, this Missing that that. That logical point right there, I, th- I thought was missing from this this segment. But Mitchin comes in with the uh, the Kendall stick and cleared the ring and checked on Bailey to uh, to end the the segment. What what'd you think of this? I don't know. I th- I think they should have let Tiff time whatever to talk a little bit more. Um, she was just getting started, but yeah, she's got a lot. She's got presence and she's gonna be a big baby face when they do turn her. And um, and yeah, they're they're you know just storyline progression, right? Right. So then Chelsea Green showed up with her neck brace backstage, and she was uh, talking to Al, uh, was trying to bang on Aldis's door. And um, uh, she, she didn't have time for his questions after the brutal money in the bank match she went through. And she said, The world is calling her the mother of mayhem, the prince of pain. And then said, They're waiting for Aldis. Then Saxon tried to say something about Aldis, but Niven cut him off and sent him away. So then we go back to the ring, and we have Nia Jax versus Meachin. And I guess. This was the, the opportunity for Meechan to get some uh, to not get squashed because she went ten minutes with Nia Jax, but I guess she's been built up enough to get some time instead of just getting killed. But yeah, she always works know. hard too. She always works yeah. hard, but she still got kind of like you know dominated. You know what I'm saying? Right. right. Which they should do because they're pushing Nia really strong. Right. So now, so after the match, Bailey roughed up Jax until Strider hit him from behind with a briefcase and put Bailey down with a spine buster. Can I just say something, Jessica? Oh, we'll, we'll go ahead. Let me finish this, this thing, though. Okay, go ahead. Jax followed up with a leg drop and motion for her and Stratton to leave together. Then Stratton waited for Jax to, to cash to, to leave, and then she teased like she might cash in, but then Jax looked at her and was like, what do you think you're doing? All right. So just for the fans that don't know, and they're always like, well, why don't they do nothing with this guy? Why don't they do nothing with that guy? You can't push everybody at the same time. Everybody can't be a star at the same time. But while you're working with stars, even if you're doing jobs – if you show, you know, professionalism and skills and talent, they're going to remember you. And then when somebody leaves or get hurt or, or it's your time, you're going to get pushed up. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So they, uh, um, they did a video package with the, with solo sitting there with the bloodline guys, like kind of like mafia style. And, um, uh, a solo said, everyone will acknowledge him by the end of the night. He's talked about the, 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 this group is more aggressive and he was burying Roman again. Which is great. Yeah, it's good. Good promo. I like that little setting that they do with the music and stuff. Everything is pretty it's good cinematic stuff. So next is um, uh, Andrade is doing an empty arena interview. Carmelo Hayes shows up out of nowhere behind him and just you know, busts the interview. Hayes boasts about being a first round draft pick. And when Saxon asked what's next, Andre point Andre pointed to Hayes and said him. So th- this was actually a decent little exchange. I thought I, right. I thought it worked for both guys mm-hmm. for both characters. Um. So you got the Phantasma. They come out. Uh, it's uh, Corbin and Apollo versus Angel and Berto. Um, the heels are out there with their his crew. Uh, Lopez distract the referee while Escobar entered the ring. Here, Cruz a knee strike and led to Angel pinning Cruz. So the your boys, the, the Mexicans went over. So that guy that was talking about, you know, maybe they might start doing something with these guys. You know, I'd like to see it because I think they, I think they're pretty. They look great. You know, what do you think? You you mean to come? They look great and they're very talented, but they just still come off as JoJo. I think this is the first time Corbin's been a babyface that I can remember. And he's he's improved so much because I remember in WrestleMania Dallas. I don't know what year that was. Uh, maybe Joe does. But uh, I saw him there wrestling in NXT, and he was brutal. Um, he's really become very entertaining and good. I'm glad they're giving him another chance. 
And uh, I just think, you know, that they come, the, the, the guard that's come off is kind of Jojo. Okay, wow. So Dallas was just... only two years ago. I thought it was longer. No, than that. there was before that. Oh, before that. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're right. Uh, th 38 was in Dallas, but 32 was in Dallas at AT&T. Oh, so was there twice? Yeah. But anyway, you're talking about 2016. Okay. So they go backstage and pretty deadly's in there. Chelsea green's in there. They're all gibbering about something, not much. And then, uh, Green told Pretty Deadly get the back of the line because no one was going to see Aldis before she did. Then LA Knight came out of Aldis's office with the contract in his hands. And he goes, uh, so then they show Cody is sitting in a dressing room with Randy by his side. And Randy um, was basically saying he will, he will always and forever have Cody's back, which means he's going to be turning on him. And Orton said Kevin Owens feels the same way, but he wasn't there. And Orton said that's on him because Owens loves to fight, but he told him to stay home with his family. And Orton said that once everything with the bloodline was over, Cody would have a lot of men coming after that championship and said he would have Cody's back then too. So he's turning on him. But see, here's uh, but the funny. Cody, Cody was saying that he doesn't he doesn't want Randy's help, and you know, I don't know this this, right. this, this whole thing with Cody's character yeah. just doesn't make. Baby faces never need any help. Baby faces right. will take on three or four guys at the right. same time. It's so yeah. stupid. Um, so this is funny, but this is what WWE does so well. Instead of going, well, why isn't Kevin Owens there? They explain it. Which right. goes back to the story you said yesterday about the NWO, where I got left laying and Lex got left laying, and nobody right. gave it a, a reason, you know. Right. So um, I just found it funny that even though I feel the same thing as you, Orton's going to turn on him because he is the Viper. But I just thought, why didn't he say something like, "Even though we're boys and I got your back, I'm still coming for that belt." And that right. should be the most important thing. Why? Why is it more important to have his back than go after the belt? That maybe right. it's a little thing, but. Um, so LA Knight came out and uh, basically um, had a contract. He signed the contract and then cut a pretty good promo on, on Logan Paul. And uh, you know, there's a good just a bit, I really can't say, but he just he just cut a good promo on Logan Paul to set up for their match. So that right. was just in this segment. Uh, Blair Davenport vignette. Uh, so... She said that while some wrestlers cry about being overlooked, she's already taken their spot. Uh, so she wrestles Naomi, Blair Davenport against Naomi, and this poor Blair Davenport girl is. But um, oh, actually, well, she, she got beat, okay. And then uh, after the match, they show them in the in the back, and she shakes her hand, and hey, you got me this time, you know that you know congratulations, she shaking. Then she walked away, and she came back and attacked her. So I thought that was pretty. So did I, but I just think that important. You know, there's just some people that, to me, from the moment you see them, they have it. There's some other people that it takes a while for you to see it. I just see nothing in her, you know, right at the time. Uh, so a bunch of people are waiting to talk to Nick Aldis, Bel Air, Cargill, stuff that's not much happening here. So then we have the tag title match for DIY against Waller and Theory, and DIY goes over. And, you know, I, I like Gargano and Ciampa, but, dude, Gargano's a, 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 it's way too much thigh slapping. Like, like it's a, he doesn't. Here, here's I, right. I constantly complain about this, right? And you can say, oh, old oh, man, like, but there's nothing. No, wrong. no, no. But you're right. But with, we're right with kicking a guy and having the guy sell it. Where right. There's no necessary of having to slap your thigh and stuff. And right. just a lot of people in this business don't. Or wearing do that the, or wearing the fucking shin pads where it sound you can hear it. Bam. Right. Right. Um, so after the match, theory was said about being hit by Waller again because they did, they did a couple spots where Waller hit theory accidentally. Uh, so then out of nowhere, Jacob Fatu came and just wiped out everybody, all four guys that just had this match. And they, you know, the match is over and he just, just, just laid waste to everything and basically uh, to clear the area for the bloodline coming out. Right. Dude, yeah. what a what push they're giving homie. I love that guy to death. I'm glad he deserves it. He's worked hard and he suffered. So I'm, I'm yeah. very happy for him. So they come out and they're in the, they're in the ring. And of course, the, remember we said that we want Roman chance are going to get louder. Well, they were right. definitely louder this week again. Right. So Sokoa said his own brother Jimmy Uso didn't acknowledge him and now he's gone. Said Paul Heyman is gone and he mentioned Roman and told the fans not to cheer now for Reigns because they don't deserve him. You've got me now and if Roman decides to come back, he will acknowledge me as his tribal chief. Sokoa said it's Cody's turn to acknowledge him and so Cody comes out. He's just, he's just, oh my God. Bro, just from a logic standpoint, this is so stupid. Okay. And I'm sorry. I, this is. This whole angle is the old trope of the brave baby face not being scared. But bro, they've been selling these four Samoans as badass killers with criminal histories and stuff. For them. And Cody's just going to walk out there. And basically, he says he said he had to speak to Nick Aldis, but told Sokoa that he might as well consider official that he would defend his championship. And said if it was really up to him, he could make the decisions, and he, but he wouldn't be waiting until SummerSlam. He would want to do it there and now. And he dropped the mic. And mind you, this this 
to show how stupid this makes his character look, he's out there with a tie on, challenging four guys to a fight. At our club, the last thing you want to do for security guard, if there's something going down, is you're taking your tie off. Right. Okay, because the guys can grab your tie and they they've got you. So, so, um, so they beat the piss out of him. Then Randy Orton comes out to save him. They beat the piss out of Randy Orton. They power, they bomb him on the table and they just just they lay them all out. And I guess the story is here that they're trying to tell is that Cody is dragging Randy down with this stuff by by acting like this, such a brave guy. But I I did not like this for the Cody Rhodes character. I thought it makes him look very stupid. Out there with a tie on, challenging four guys to a fight. This is, it's, it's ugh, I'm sorry. I just Maybe think that too for me, is the whole, my whole life, and we've seen this with all the top baby faces, whether it's Sting or Cena or Rock or Austin, you know, as a baby face, just taking on various heels and people popping and buying into it. Right. So it's just something that in this universe is accepted. Yeah. I guess, but it still doesn't, you know, I, I did, it just did nothing for Cody's character, but it actually made me gave a good reason for Randy Orton to be pissed off at him now. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So the show was like, all right. I, I you know, they, they did, they did, I, I did like the movie. ending, even, even though you did. And I liked the ending. <laughs> well, the way it finished, the visual yeah. was good because it got heat on the heels. Right. You know? So, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, the show was all right, in my opinion, because they're, f- they're furthering the storylines, but they had a lot of jabroni characters and, Nick Aldis's door wanted to see Nick Aldis all night, and it was kind of just, I don't yeah, know. There was nothing was great there. on it. There was nothing, no. yeah, the only good thing was probably the end. And the numbers were good, too. Yeah, it's because it's Maybe a hot the, product. The arc of the show, it went, and the, the Bloodline thing in the end was the highest rated segment right. again, huh? Wow. Yeah, the blood, even no Roman, the Bloodline is still the number one number one draw on professional wrestling day with, with Solo Sokoa. Right. Hard to argue that, right? Right, and imagine when he comes back, and then Paul oh Lee comes back. Bro, that show could be, be like 2.7, 2.8, but they make it back to yeah. 3 million people. It's like they do a good angle, you know? Right. All right, so that's been our SmackDown review. Boom. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content and being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams uh thank you for your support thank you for riding with us i know you got a lot of other uh podcast choices be it wrestling or other ones and thank you for picking us boom